Hello everybody, Maria Grossbaum is here, Maria Grossbaum from Abyssima Mixed Media Online School with a new tutorial, a tutorial that many of you asked me to create and voila, it is happening, Ta -da 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 -da. this particular work. Many people loved it and today I'm showing you, I'm not hiding anything, I have no secrets from you, so this is what we are going to create. It's naive, intuitive, uh, sparkling, shimmering, cool work that doesn't have a specific orientation because it is a circle. And circle is a fundamental shape. Somehow it uh, gives us a lot of harmony and uh, when you think about circle, circular uh, objects, you can find quite a lot. The flower, the iris, the planets. I'm not gonna go, you can guess, there's so many of it. So um, somehow intuitively I also ended up creating this shape. So it's all about creating this cool circular movement. That was number one. Number two, in this particular class, we are going to learn how to work with uh, mica powders. Mica powders are fantastic. I'm going to show you how to apply them, how to create washes and gradients, how to create colorful background and then to apply mica on top so that whatever is underneath is also easy to find and seen. And um, also very important how to seal mica powders because powder is a powder. When it dries, it can just fall off your beautiful artwork and it's going to lose its shimmer and we don't want this to happen. And uh, many other things. So it's going to be intuitive, it's going to be, um, you know, it, there's no specific layout. You can experiment and there is a bunch of uh, different options to find your creative um, language that you can apply in this uh, layout which allows you to express yourself artistically almost endlessly and many 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 other things so <laughs> i'm chatty today i'm chatty but why not you know once once in a while i feel chatty okay so let's get started that Oh wow, I just noticed that actually my logo is also a circle and here I'm showing you again a circular uh, movement of the model painting and this is what I'm going to keep. Now, the paper. So I used um, bluish grey uh, paper, they're all kind of papers in this set paint on, it's for multimedia. I wouldn't say it's fantastic, it's a little bit light, it's only 250 gram and um, you will have to mount it and I'm going to show you how to do it, mount it on a more sturdy surface, I used cardboard and at the moment I'm attaching this paper to the cardboard because this way it will be easier for me to manipulate, rotate, um, change the angle to let colors bleed and so on and so on. Please, 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 please. How many times did I say please? Please don't worry if you don't have this particular type of paper. You can try any other type of paper could be watercolor paper or just any other type of paper. Um, the only important thing is uh, to check that it's not too thin, okay? Could be white, could be black, could be any color. So, next step. I'm going to be very impulsive and I encourage you to be impulsive as well. So, remember the circular movement and I just squeezed directly to the paper fluorescent orange uh, acrylic it could be any brand if you don't have orange you could use any other uh, acrylic I would suggest to go for fluorescent could be blue green yellow anything you have on hand no need to buy any specific expensive materials so I'm using an opposite side of brush and adding additional circles Calls. Yes, additional circles for more texture. Now I'm showing you here um, a really cool 
product that I use a lot. This product is produced by American company Color Arte. In my opinion, they create most beautiful um, metallic pigments. So makeup powders that I'm going to use also was uh, produced by this company but right now I'm using metal acrylics so I believe the one that I'm using called uh, pearl mother pearl something something pearl I'll check again well it was a mother of pearls and this one is velvet haze it's uh, velvet and it's metallic and it's very very beautiful too Again, don't worry if you don't have these particular products, I'm going to list them underneath this video and I will also attach a link to their website in case you're interested, you could make an order and maybe even receive a discount. Let me check that for you. I mentioned earlier a word impulsive. Impulsive for me, working fast. Working fast sometimes adds an additional energy that is staying in your artwork. And uh, I mean, there is beauty in meditative work and there is also a joy in the, you know, the impulsive approach. So um, I really, really encourage you to give it a try. Don't worry if it's not perfect. Perfection doesn't exist anyway. Okay, so now I'm showing you really cool black emerald. Uh, mica powders by the same company Color Arte and let's see what it does so I'm using a knife and you really need just a little bit you don't need a lot of it because it's very strong with pigment so I suggest to apply like sprinkle on top little by little if it's not enough you could always add so I added it on the surface and sprayed some water now Take a look what happens. You see that uh, these uh, crystals of mica powders started to get different uh, colors, yellow, red, blue, green. That's exactly why I love this company. Color Arty uses many different colors in order to achieve specific tone. And that allows for colors to be to become really really rich and intense so you see that right now this black pearl looks kind of blue-ish but there is red yellow uh, brown all kind of colors and that what makes it so so special all right so I think we need to lighten everything up and I'm going to add interference green mica powders. It looks like white mica powder, but once it interacts with water, it creates beautiful greenish shimmering effect. So if your surface is wet, you could use brush or you could uh, try and spray water on it and by changing an angle of your um, board let it bleed and travel on the surface well 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 i love this play and uh, now let's uh, add some blue mica powder so let's talk a bit more about mica what is mica powder so mica powder is a fine shimmering mineral powder made from mica a naturally occurring mineral okay it's used uh, in many different industries like cosmetics for example and in arts okay so mica itself is a silicate mineral that can be ground into a fine powder and depending on its source and processing it can come in various colors and various levels of shimmer okay so enough of uh, geology let's concentrate on our um, artistic process so as you see i'm again using a uh, an opposite side of brush and adding more circles adding more textures now what is interesting for us artists 
in mica powders is that it's not transparent it's opaque so it's really great because it works on any type of surface if you apply it on black paper it's still going to be very very visible which is fantastic well I think I almost completed this part I really want to leave everything aside and let dry but before finishing I feel like adding some lighter tone in the center of all this colorful mess so I've added this uh, white metal acrylics acrylic and uh, I'll just leave it as is the only suggestion yes I'm using hair dryer in order to speed up the process just one suggestion about this part don't apply very thick layer of paints on your paper because um, it will be difficult it might clog uh, Posca pen afterwards okay so keep this in mind okay so this is what it looks like when it's dry of course colors look more pale but it's okay with me I like the result it has the circles it has colorful mess exactly as i like i'm just um, not sure about um, the central part i think it might still be a little bit wet but let's see what we can do because i'm really eager to continue so i mentioned posca pen quite a few times but the one i found uh, has very very small amount of paints so I'm showing you here all this circular movements again and with the snowman which is a white permanent marker which smells awfully I think it's absolutely it's almost impossible to work with this especially when your your windows are closed but I'm going to use this one because Posca pen yes this is what happens when your kid is an artist you run out of uh, art supplies really quickly because you never know what is happening here so i'm going to use this one instead and for very fine lines i'm going to use white posca pen okay well actually it's not that bad because i'm showing you different approaches and the alternative materials who knows maybe you have something like this on hand and you don't need to go to the store but you have to be very strict with this artist's uh, kids my daughter she takes things from me and I never can find them anyway so I just showed you horizontal lines on my model painting which I'm going to paint first so I'm going to speed up the video a little bit Bit because what I'm doing right now is quite obvious I'm just adding rough lines I'm creating composition with white lines and uh, once I'm happy with this I will add embellishments patterns I will uh, change the thickness of lines but right now I just want to um, see where everything is and uh, yeah that's my play okay so uh, let's uh, see how it is going now it is also really important to rotate your uh, artwork because then you will see something that was hidden from you maybe you will have a new idea everything becomes more you know clearer when you see things from different angles now let's get closer and I want to show you how I treat perpendicular lines when they meet with each other perpendicularly. I hope this is a correct English. So as you see, I'm kind of adding curved, um, curved lines so they're smoothly and, uh, and in another line. Oh my gosh, it's so difficult to explain. But I hope that what I'm doing is clear and obvious. So um, I'm using specific principles in uh, building this white pattern. And uh, there, there's not too many, but one, and I guess it's the most important one, is that uh, all the lines are really like, you know, curved and uh, smooth. 
I don't have any um, straight lines. Everything is very kind of soft. And uh, um, I'm going to add, well, I know there is a Zentangle style, which I never really um, learned. But intuitively, I think I, I use similar principles. So let's keep going. You will understand clear, clearer what I mean. So let's, for example, work on this part of the white pattern. So I'm adding these uh, circles that are not equal in shape and size. That's exactly one of the principles. I don't want any repetitive um, pattern and repetitive same shapes. So I first mark these uh, circles and then I feel with white all the area outside of it within this um, narrow path, if I may say so. You see what I'm saying? And um, that exact principle is going to be used everywhere. And um, I, I think I will also, yeah, just take a look how everything is kind of like flowing with each other. Yeah, that's the model painting. And uh, I don't have any like screaming sharp uh, corners. So everything is very rounded, very uh, smooth and circle-ish. <laughs> I don't know if there's such a word. Well, I just noticed that I've been talking non-stop for more than 15 minutes. I'll shut up and let you watch me creating intuitively this uh, composition with white lines. Okay, I think uh, I'm quite happy with what is happening and now it's time to add trees. Of course, I don't insist that you add trees. I don't even insist that you will use exactly same style of uh, drawing. You could, you know, there's no limits as I always say. If you feel that uh, you want to speak completely different artistic language, please do so, okay? Please experiment. It's better if you experiment and failed than skip experimenting at all. Because that's how we learn, okay? And yes, I'm just uh, trying to add these trees here and um, you can see that there is a central part that kind of divides the tree. I don't want to fill it with um, branches and trunks. I don't know, I just uh, want, I want to have this um, dissonance to break the pattern. I think it makes my uh, trees looking more interesting.
So I switched to Posca pen because it allows me to create uh, more thin, more fine lines that are perfect for the branches, especially the upper branches. Well, I just noticed that I'm actually uh, painting trees upside down. Well, I think I should uh, rotate my working area. Well, this is so much easier. Painting trees upside down is really tricky. I don't know how I ended up uh, doing this. Okay, so as you see with uh, thin branches, I'm not reaching all the way to the white uh, line that uh, limits, you know, this uh, tree area. It's because there is a masking tape and all this area is going to be cut. There is going to be nothing, only the frame, which is fine with me. Um, so... Um, I'm quite happy with uh, what I'm doing and what I'm seeing. I think that my work uh, becomes more and more balanced and um, yeah, maybe I will add some more eggs in other areas and yeah, little by little I will fill out this area. There's one important thing though that I really, I think it's important to mention is that uh, if you have a blank space, by blank space I mean space with not too much white pattern, it's okay sometimes to leave it as is, you know, um, there always has to be a place, you know, for breathing, like for example, the trees area is, you know, it's quite busy, so I need to uh, balance it with something else on the opposite side, but on other sides I think I will I won't add too many details too many details um, will confuse your eye so what can I draw on the opposite side I don't want to add more trees there I think I need something else yep you can probably already notice an animal I think it's my big 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 failure but um, you know you never know till you try so my idea was uh, to add a wolf and now it looks like some kind of strange dog but uh, i'm going to add thick uh, tail so then it will look more like a fox a strange fox but still fox <laughs> Oh well, my fox is far from perfect and it might even look like some other animals. But uh, my aim is to show you many different possibilities. And I think a silhouette of any animal or bird or maybe plant or maybe anything else or maybe just ornaments will look really, really nice uh, on uh, this beautiful, shimmering, colorful background. Again, you don't have to follow my style, you could create something completely different or use completely different elements or speak different creative language or if you don't have any ideas, you're more than welcome to uh, copy my uh, ideas okay most importantly is to understand really the process and then experiment with this and try different figures images ornaments anything that you find interesting and beautiful Well, you know what? I still like my fox. I think it's good. Now I'm trying and adding some uh, silhouettes of birds and the biggest one is not very successful. I can tell already. But again, I'm just giving you ideas. Okay? Just play with this. As long as we recognize this figure as birds, it's all good. I also noticed that when I shake 
my Posca pen, it actually leaves some blobs. Maybe I should, you know, add them um, intentionally. What do you think? Let's see. Yeah, apparently this Posca pen is not uh, working really well. Well, of course, because, uh, you know, my daughter was playing with this. Now I have to um, turn it into happy mistakes. Yep, so there are a couple of blobs that I've added, and I think it's cool. And of course, uh, you know, uh, another little tree is also a good idea to have. I'm just going to speed up the video and add more elements, because now you know exactly what I'm doing and uh, what uh, style I'm trying to keep. So, just watch me. Well, 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 looks like I'm getting somewhere. I uh, really enjoy it. Like I uh, know every painting goes through this ugly stage. And right now I already kind of see what I'm doing and where I'm going. And I'm thinking about central part. I think a spiral spiral will look good and it will, it will be like a connecting element that works really well with this whole circular uh, style. Yeah, I like it. I hope you do too. So at this point I decided to take off this um, masking tape and uh, it will give me a better idea if my composition is uh, balanced and what else needs to be added to my work. Mm, look at this artwork. I don't know, I'm not sure about the orientation, but that's exactly the point because some elements are upside down, but upside down on purpose. I really like the shimmer, I like the movement, I like the elements. I think it's more or less balanced, but let's see what else could be added. Well, so I have really cool idea and uh, this is going to be another technique that I want you to use. So now I'm going to work with mica powders and I'm going to add beautiful greenish fog in the trees area. And the best one for this, of course, is it's the interference green. So the way I work, I'm using thin brush and I'm mixing with water mica. Okay, and then I'm just adding it directly to the painting. Okay, let's get closer. So I'm technically painting on top of, um, of the tree and creating some kind of waves with mica, okay? Once I have the color on my painting, I wash the brush and I dry it a little bit and then I'm mm, blurring the edges because fog is fog, right? We don't want any distinct edges. So while mica is still wet, I am uh, making it look more blurry, just like fog. And I think it is really beautiful effect. So one more time. Uh, you apply mica mixed with uh, water. Once you're satisfied, you wash your brush, you dry it with paper towel, and then um, add blurry look to the edges. 
okay let's take a look yes I totally love this effect so this effect is really subtle you can only see it in specific angle that's what I love about Micah and that's what I love about interference okay so um, even if your mica is dry already you could still uh, apply water on top and rework it and add more uh, gradients or this blurry effect so I'm thinking about adding same effect to the upper part of the trees I totally love it green fog mm -mm -mm. really really sweet Gosh, I just love this effect it's so I don't know it adds this another kind of uh, layer of colors and it's still very subtle and so elegant so I'm going to use same effect on these other trees mm, I love it so much I really hope you like it I really encourage you to try this effect look how shimmering this is we will uh, also uh, use fixative to make sure that mica sealed well and it's uh, staying on your painting so it's not falling off mm, I just love it I love it I'm sorry I'm just being very very excited when something works well it is really uh, you know makes me super happy well now I think I'm addicted to interference green and I want to add it right uh, in the holes I'm mm, not sure about this one I think it takes away the beauty of this ornament but you know what let's leave it like this so here's the tip for you if you applied too much mica you could just use a clean wet brush and kind of uh, wipe it off okay now let's play a bit before I got carried away with um, uh, interference green let's do this one the black pearl mica and um, you know create some accent in specific areas I am going to show you what I mean well I called it um, black pearl but it's actually black emerald and you can see why it's a bit greenish so I'm working uh, using exactly same approach just mixing mica with water if you want it to be more colorful more intense add less water if you want it to be uh, pale make it dil more diluted okay so um, just I don't have any specific idea but I want to repeat similar steps and add um, accents with this dark mica and then to create some kind of gradient so let's see how it is going to look so when mica dries it becomes more pale and all the sparkles are staying on the surface so it will become more sparkly and uh, less dark so keep this in mind but I think uh, more you practice more you will feel this particular pigment but technically you just paint with this just as you do with other colors like watercolors acrylics or oils whatever you like using yeah I think this is a beautiful effect too so it, we could still see what's underneath and it also adds beautiful shimmer and now let's give it a try with this cool magenta ah, this is really really nice one but um, mm -hmm. where am I going to apply it so inside the holes I'm just using full color let's call it full color and uh, right there with the tail I'm creating some kind of like a gradient you see how it's intense on one side and then it's gradually uh, disappears so play with this technique as well I think uh, this uh, will look 
quite interesting and will add an additional depth to your artwork. So here is a good example of the gradient. So on the left uh, side I have fuller color and then it gradually disappears and it's easy to achieve with, um, so first you apply color, then you wash your brush, then you dry it with paper towel and then you kind of uh, blur it in one end and then you get this beautiful gradient look. Again, subtle effect, but it adds so much interest, so much attraction to your work. I mean, at least this is what it seems to me like. Mm, and look at this magenta on the blue one. I just totally love it. Like, I feel like I want to eat these colorful tones with my eyes. It looks really, really t tasty to me. It looks really... Um, really really attractive just look at all these colors isn't it something and actually i'm not using many there is green blue uh, magenta this uh, emerald uh, black emerald and uh, interference green and just uh, it's just fantastic what you could do with a small amount of these colors. So there are quite a few brands of mica powders and some of them are really, really beautiful, but I still prefer Color Artem. Please check the link below this video. You could purchase directly from their website if you want to try this product. Well, actually, all colors, all pigments of color art are fantastic, but micas are my favorite, so I really encourage you to try. Well, so now you know my secrets. These are not secrets, but technically what I'm doing, I'm just accenting uh, certain areas with different uh, colors of mica. And yes, I encourage you to uh, play with this and to see how it feels all right i know there are a lot of things in this particular um tutorial but you know i if i already started so i'll just go all the way so here i'm showing you another effect okay so i'm, I'm done with my cup and now i'm showing you how i'm adding with regular gray marker um shadow and it looks like all this white ornament now is lifted. Do you see this three-dimensional effect? So it's just an effect. You don't need to apply it, but I thought it will be cool if I show you. I personally like it a lot. Okay, so any uh, gray, black probably would be too strong, but any gray marker um, might add this really cool three-dimensional effect so not always it uh, it will you know uh, move smoothly because we have some texture we have mica we have a regular acrylics so uh, sometimes uh, you might uh, experience some difficulties moving it around but no worries like it doesn't have to be really obvious in some places and it it would be enough on my opinion Okay, so I think it's cool and I think I'm done. I'm done. Of course, I could, uh, you know, go on and on and on, but the idea is to show you techniques that I'm using in this type of uh, mixed media artwork. I like it. I think it's great. It has everything I like. So don't forget to uh, close your markers. And now let's talk about mounting your artwork on a cardboard, because as you see, the paper is quite thin. Okay, so I'm uh, first placing a blank uh, paper and then uh, applying 
extra heavy gel gloss it works as a very strong glue now if you don't have it it's fine you could use any acrylic varnish or any strong glue or any uh, gel medium doesn't have to be extra extra heavy could be you know more uh, diluted okay so apply good amount Okay, so I'm using same cardboard as I used uh, before and easy peasy. I'm just attaching it to, uh, to this cardboard. But I know there is a special roll that allows you to evenly, evenly apply pressure on your artwork. Well, as I mentioned before, I have a kid and my kid is an artist and my art supplies disappearing often okay so i'm using my hands okay i'm using my hands and lightly pressing but making sure that uh well, not that lightly really um pressing making sure that all the parts of the artwork glued nicely to the cardboard okay that seems all right now i've made a tactical mistake i'm going to talk about this a bit later but meanwhile um, let me just uh, cut uh, unnecessary cardboard. So metal ruler and a knife are my best partners for that. Please, 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 please be careful with uh, your fingers, okay? We don't want any traumatic experience. We are here to enjoy creative process. Okay, yep, now it's all sturdy, it's not bending, it's glued really nicely and I think it's really, really great and I think I'll sign my work, why not? Now I have quite a few um, signatures, but for this one I'm going to use just my initials, M, G, Maria Gross Bow, okay? I know this work doesn't have specific orientation, but I just uh, keep it on... Uh, empty corner so i think it's really sweet and i love this 3d, 3D effect uh, that i've added at the end now let's talk about my tactic mistake and let's talk about fixing your uh, mica fixative that i'm using is general and it's good for uh, different mediums like charcoals pastels uh, pens and mica as well so if we are not going to fix it and fixative works as a glue then with the time powder will fall off and your artwork is going to lose its shimmering shine okay and we don't want this to happen now my tactic mistake was uh, that I mounted my work before applying fixative so if you remember we also pressed with um, another paper I could lose some mica so I believe that it's better first to apply fixative and then to mount your work gosh I just loved that I loved this tutorial I love the instructions and I love uh, creating this artwork I totally love working with mica powders and I really really hope that uh, the seed is planted and you want to give it a try please 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 open your creative horizons I really encourage you so if you going to try this tutorial i really want to see what you will create the best place to see it is my facebook group with a lot of artists it's really great place to show off and to meet good uh, new creative friends okay the link is below this video now check this out see fixative really works okay again any fixative is good general fixative you there is no fixative for mica specifically okay so nothing stays on my fingerprints and this is the model painting i think we've created a really nice one too i like them both so i'm gonna see you in my facebook group please don't be shy show your results 